Hi guys and welcome back to World of Tanks and today I'm going to be looking at the new Polish tanks that dropped with 4.8 uh, update a couple of days ago. So starting off down at tier 1 we have the 4TP uh, which is based off the uh, the Carden Lloyd, the Vickers Carden Lloyd and then moving along to tier 2 we have the 7TP. Now I'm not going to spend too much time on these because I would imagine that people will either skip through these or you're going to be out of these in a very very short amount of time so I didn't really see much point in spending a great deal of time uh, on these ones but you can definitely see the sort of British tank influence within them and they're generally characterized by having slightly higher alpha than the contemporaries and basically paper thin armor that's your sort of low tier polish so thin armor they do seem fairly maneuverable the tier 3 is quite maneuverable and is just quite a capable tier 3 tank with its 75 millimeters of uh, alpha damage, sorry, 75 millimeters, with its 75 alpha damage on its 47 millimeter gun and a power to weight ratio of 17.49. So it's no slouch. There are faster tanks out there, there are definitely slower, but it does pack a punch. Now, at tier 4, we have the 14 TP, and as you can see, very, very similar to the tier 3 tank. Uh, it, they do share a lot of the components, in fact it does also have a 47mm gun with that same 75 alpha damage, but it has an increased rate of fire. It also has uh, an increased penetration and a higher power to weight ratio as well, so it is a little bit nippier than the tier 3. And then moving along, at tier 5 we have the 25 TP. Now these are all fully upgraded, don't forget, so these are not the stock versions. I thought to do this so you could actually see what you're going to be getting at the end of those grinds. So here we have something that's kind of like a, a transition between a, a light and a medium in a way. It's quite a weak hull. It's got a good power to weight ratio though, just over 18 horsepower per tonne. And the turret's not too bad either with 80 millimeters of frontal armor and it is fairly well rounded. It does have good gun depression which is another trait of the Polish tanks. Uh, along with the, the higher alpha damage they do have good gun depression. Uh, and are generally fairly mobile. There are a few exceptions to that, or should I say, are mobile for their classes, I think is probably um, a better way of saying it. So this tank, it does kind of remind me of the Sherman, but it gets 135 alpha again. You know, it's not the highest, but it is quite high, or it's higher than its medium tier 5, com you know, sort of compatriots. And 135 penetration as well. It's very good at working the ridge lines. It's got good gun depression, as I mentioned before, and good for working the flanks as well because of its good mobility. Then moving along to tier six, we move on to another medium. Uh, there are only two mediums in this line. The tier seven is a heavy, even though it feels more like a medium. Uh, this is where we start getting to the sort of Soviet and German inspired vehicles. So tier 6 and 7 were both inspired by Soviet and German designs, as you can see there, uh, with the sloped upper glacis. Now this one, it is a tier 6 medium, but it has a 90mm with 240 alpha damage, which is usually reserved for your tier 6 heavies. You don't tend to get mediums with that sort of damage, uh, even at tier 7, most of them you know a lot of them don't have that kind of damage apart from the, the American T20 so it is quite nice it's not overly mobile with a power to weight ratio of just over 11 horsepower per ton so it does feel slightly sluggish and the hull armor isn't great uh, you can bounce a few shots but it's not something you want to rely on but again you've got good gun depression but you do have to watch your cupola so let's move along to tier 7 and the 45 TP. Now I actually did think this was a medium when I went out in it and had to check because I, you know, I was like, hang on a minute, I could have sworn this was heavy and it is a heavy. It does feel like it's, well it's described as a medium heavy and it does feel a bit more like a medium rather than a heavy. It has a 105mm gun, a uh, very similar gun to the, the one on the T29 so you get 320 alpha damage which again is not really high for the tier, there's a lot of tier 7 heavies uh, that have you know that or higher damage. So this is probably the exception in the line with that slightly higher alpha. Again, it does have decent gun depression though, uh, the lower tiers have between sort of 10 to 12 degrees of gun depression, the higher tiers are 8 which is still nothing to be sniffed at. 
Uh, the turret is quite rounded, not the thickest turret I've seen, but it is quite rounded, so you can bounce a few shots off it, and again, especially when you're using that gun depression. And, you know, it does feel mobile enough, it gets a power to weight ratio of 16.84, so, you know, that is certainly mobile for a heavy tank. So, moving along to the tier 8 and the 53TP. Uh, is characterised, according to the, the Wargaming website, as a tough turret on top of a weak hull. And that is kind of right, if we have a look at the, the armour profile here, the turret is quite tough, although there is one glaring weak spot, as you can see, which is that Commander's Cupola on top. So, you know, that's kind of where you want to go for one of these. You can side scrape in this, but your side armour isn't the best. So you do have to be wary, but your tracks are quite large. They do eat a few shots from my own experience, uh, and you can side scrape in it. It is a weaker hull, but it's certainly not what you would describe as a weak hull, so to speak. Uh, but it is definitely weaker than a lot of its counterparts. The gun that it gets uh, on the tier 8 is a 122mm, but again with slightly higher alpha than uh, some of its counterparts at 440 alpha damage. So again, it, it does pack a bit of a punch. Mobility is not too bad with a power to weight ratio, just a shade under 14 horsepower per tonne. Getting up onto the tier 9, and you have the 50TP. The 50TP prototype, of course, is a tier 8 premium, and uh, the 50TP itself is the tier 9 heavy. It does look a little bit odd, uh, but this is where we start getting towards the tougher hulls. The armour on this isn't too bad, and again, a tough turret and higher alpha damage. If we go to the armour profile there, you can see the front of the turret is very tough. The lower glacis is tough. You have a quite a well-sloped upper glacis, and again, the commander's hatch or the commander's viewport, again, is quite well armoured. And you do have those 8 degrees of gun depression to, well, to be able to put the 560 alpha damage to good use. So again, most of the tanks, or a lot of the tanks, you may be looking at 490, sort of the upper end generally of the, the heavy tank damage at, at tier 9. So 560, this does pack a good punch. And the, uh, the rate of fire is not too bad at 3.21 rounds a minute either. And then finally, we have the tier 10. Now, I have really enjoyed going out in the tier 9 and the tier 10. My first match in the tier 9, I got a top gun. And my first match in the tier 10, I didn't do too bad, but it was a loss, unfortunately, because, well, it was sort of one of those instances where not many people went one way. But anyway, I digress. Tier 10, again, tough turret. The hull has got tougher. Uh, you can see it's not the thickest armour, but it is very, very well sloped, both upper and lower glacis. The driver's viewports are very well armoured as well. And the turret has got lots of nice angles, lots of nice rounding to it, and lots of nice thick patches of armour. Even the front of your commander's cupola is quite tough. You do have that weak spot on top of the turret though, but again, you can kind of manage that when you're using your gun depression. And again, this does have minus 8 degrees of gun depression, and is armed, if I can zoom out, there you go. Nope, still can't get it all in. It's armed with a 152mm gun with a whopping 750 alpha damage. This is described as a hybrid between an E75, no, not an E75, sorry, an E100 and an IS4. And uh, yeah, I do kind of like the gun on this. It is quite nice. So, is it worth the grind to tier 10 personally? I would say yes, it definitely is. There's going to be some frustrating moments along that grind. Um, but I would say that the, the end result with this tier 10, the 60 TP, is definitely worth that grind in my opinion. Especially if you like the Russian tanks, because that's kind of what you're getting. A Russian heavy, but with gun depression. So there you go. Anyway, I hope you found that informative. I will cover these tanks in more detail in future videos. Uh, but until then, take care out there and I'll catch you next time. See you later.